Have you ever felt like you're spinning plates trying to keep a major tech project or two or 10 afloat while managing your daily operational tasks? Do you and your team seem to be working as hard as you can, but feel like you're getting nowhere? If so, grab a cup of coffee and let's chat about balancing the demands of IT projects and normal operations. I'm Tina Marie Baugh. I have over 25 years of hands-on experience in technology leadership. I aim to provide practical insights so seasoned tech experts turned managers can bridge the gap between their technical prowess and leadership excellence. Imagine this scenario. Your team is deeply immersed in their operational tasks. The gears of your day-to-day IT operations are running smoothly. Suddenly, the project management office, PMO, drops a bombshell. A groundbreaking project that could transform the business. Or there is an urgent zero-day risk that demands immediate attention. Now you're faced with a delicate balancing act. How do you embrace these new challenges while continuing to provide top-notch service, ensuring high availability and robust security, all without pushing your team to the brink? This is not just a task. It's a constant struggle for IT leaders. The first question is always, who can do the work? A powerful tool here is the RACI matrix. What does RACI stand for? Responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed. Responsible means doing the task. Accountable means owning the outcome. Consulted means involved in decision-making. And informed means updated on progress. Only one person can be accountable in a RACI. This matrix is not just a tool. It's a clarity provider. Here's how you use it. List the major operational tasks your team completes along the left. List the team members along the top. Then assign each task an R, A, C, and I category for each team member. Not everyone in your team needs a role for every task. A tip for location-based teams. You'll want to list tasks by location since most likely different people will be accountable for the same tasks for different locations. By completing a RACI with your team, you'll see who is doing what, who is stretched too thin, and where there might be some capacity. It gives a clear picture of your team's current operational workload and highlights areas where resources are potentially over or under utilized. Remember, focus on operational work only. Projects should have their own RACI charts. Now that we know who is doing what on a regular basis, let's talk about strategies for division of work. Consider prioritizing tasks using the Eisenhower matrix, sorting them by urgency and importance. This helps everyone focus on what truly matters. We want to give people work that matters and not have people working on busy tasks.
If you want to learn more about the Eisenhower Matrix, check out in the description section for a link to our episode covering the matrix. Also, consider capacity planning. Most project management applications can help visually track team capacity and project timelines. This is crucial for making informed decisions and having crucial conversations with your boss and peers about planning. Let me give you an example. If the same application specialist is needed for 20 deliverables on a project, but the project plan shows those deliverables overlap, then some adjustments to the plan probably need to be made. When working with global teams, understanding and respecting cultural differences is vital. Be aware of work hours, holidays, and communication styles across cultures to ensure fair scheduling and effective delegation. This is about more than time management. It's about fostering a culture of respect and an inclusive workspace. Let's talk about striking the right balance between operational work and project engagements. A critical step in achieving this balance is to document (laughs) and understand how much time each team member should ideally spend on operational tasks versus projects. Typically, junior team members might be more involved in operational work, say an 80-20 split, whereas senior members are often more project-focused. Also, an 80-20 ratio, but in favor of projects. Although this is what their job descriptions might say and what we intend for them to do, the reality in many teams can be quite different. To get a true picture, I recommend conducting a two-week time audit. In this audit, team members log their activities and the time spent on them, either on paper or electronically, in 30-minute increments. This involves jotting down a quick note about each activity, whether it's attending a meeting for the new software project, working on tickets, handling customer calls, or any other task. This granular approach helps uncover precisely where and how time is being spent within your team. It's a revelation, especially for senior members, to see the proportion of their time consumed by daily operational work, which they might not have fully realized. They know they are busy, but the extent of time dedicated to operational tasks often comes as a surprise. I have found very senior members of some of my teams replacing UPS batteries and providing white glove support to customers simply because those customers have known team members for a long time. The senior members had no idea how much of their time was being consumed by this type of work. Having the data allowed me to have a chat with the team and key customers to help get the work into the right people's hands. By implementing this audit, you gain invaluable insights into the actual state 
of your team's time allocation. Comparing this data against the ideal work distribution you initially outlined based on roles and seniority allows you to identify discrepancies. Understanding these differences is crucial for informed decisions about resource allocation, training needs, and potentially expanding the team. So do you need more hands on deck? Build your case with data from your RACI matrix, project plans, and time audits. Demonstrate the clear need for additional resources and how they will lead to better outcomes. Come with options such as short-term outsourcing, postponing a project, and launching a project at a more basic level with fewer features. If you come with options and data, you show you're being creative and thinking about the business, not just your team. Remember, it's about showing the benefit to the project and the organization. Make it a win-win for everyone. And there we have it. Effective tips for balancing the demands of IT projects and normal operations. We've delved into the practical use of the RACI matrix, the importance of the Eisenhower matrix in prioritization, and the nuances of capacity planning, especially in culturally diverse environments. This approach not only aids in efficient planning, but also promotes a respectful and inclusive team environment. As we continue to explore the vast and dynamic world of technology leadership, I invite you to delve deeper by checking out my other videos. Each one is designed to provide you with actionable insights and strategies to enhance your leadership skills in the tech arena. Until next time, innovate, inspire, learn, and lead. You got this.